Welcome back everybody. I'm really excited today. Today we get to enter Irithyll of the Boreal Valley. Before we do that though, I'm going to let you take a look at the stats that I'm holding. You'll notice that my Executioner's Greatsword is now level 7 and my character's level is now at 50. In addition, I'm going to be using the Shield of Want to generate more souls from kills as well as some of the following rings. Now we're going to be completing the entrance bridge and there's an item that you're going to need to be holding and that's the small doll. We'll go ahead and read it. A small silverwork doll depicting a young squire. In the legendary old city of Irithyll situated in the Boreal Valley, the Pontiff Sullivan gave this doll to valued subjects so they might use it to cross the barrier when they return home. Listen carefully and you can hear it say, Wherever you go, the moon still sets in Erethyl. Wherever you may be, Erethyl is your home. You grab this item from the Cathedral of the Deep after defeating the Deacons. And it's very similar to the key needed to enter Raya Lucaria Academy. You might notice many similarities between both locations. And I also want you to take note of mention of Pontiff Sullivan. He plays an important role at this location and the game hints towards him being the mastermind behind this age's current situation. I'll fill you in about him as we continue our walkthrough. But enough of that, we're going to continue down this journey to cross this bridge. Now, this is another instance of the game being very clear to you. And if you hadn't gone through this walkthrough, this giant creature might surprise you. However, since we're taking care of him in this walkthrough, all you have to do is look behind you as you're crossing the bridge. And you'll notice a giant possum-like creature emerge from the shadow. He can be quite challenging to take out, especially because he moves very fast. You have to constantly stay underneath his belly or near his hind legs. But even while doing that, he could be incredibly challenging. Thankfully, if you die, the bonfire is not too far away and you can try him multiple times. After you defeat him, you get Pontiff's right eye. Okay, so we're going to continue down this bridge to enter the magical gate. And you can see it's kind of like a fog gate. Now, if we didn't have that doll, we would be unable to cross this gate. But thankfully, we've already retrieved it. And the bonfire is right over here. What I'm going to do now is I am going to use this bonfire to teleport myself back to the first bonfire I was at. And the reason I'm doing that is to, is to locate the summoning sign of Sirius of the sunless realms. This time Sirius is going to summon us into her world as a plea for help. Much like Yura from Elden Ring summons us at the gate of Raya Lucaria. The similarity is actually pretty uncanny. In Elden Ring, Yura requested the aid of the player to defeat an assassin that was sent to kill him. And in Dark Souls, Sirius is summoning us for a similar reason. A finger of Rosaria, which is Basically, the Assassin Guild has been harassing Sirius in a similar manner. And now we come to her aid. This NPC is pretty tough. He has a weapon skill that allows him to gain hyper armor. And he buffs his weapon with lightning. So taking a few hits from him head on can kill you in just a few seconds. Thankfully, you're not alone in this fight. You'll be able to use Sirius to your advantage and you can dispatch him fairly easily. But don't get complacent because he is still a force to be reckoned. After defeating him here on the bridge, Kraken the Wanderer will become an invading NPC later on in this video. 
In addition to that, Sirius will have some dialogue for us once we return to Firelink Shrine. And we will get to that dialogue later, but we won't immediately return to Firelink Shrine. Thank you for your kind assistance. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. And that's it. Hopefully you learn his abilities because later on you'll be facing him one on one all by yourself. After defeating him, we can go ahead and head back to the gate bonfire and we can start making our way inside of the city of Irithyll. This place is pretty interesting. As you start walking up these steps, you're going to see these silhouettes of a time past and they are going to be of the Outrider Knights heading out to battle. If you look closely, when we start heading in this direction, you are going to notice only one ghostly figure. But later on, there's going to be two of them. I'm pretty sure this was done intentionally, although it's very obscure. These two ghostly figures that we're going to see are a representation of the two main Outrider Knights that we face in Lothric Castle. The first one that we have already killed is Vort of the Boreal Valley. And the second we have not defeated yet, but she is known as the Dancer. She's a really tough fight and we will get to her later on in this playthrough. Now, these new enemies here are called Pontiff Knights, and they are not particularly tough, but they do have a string of combos that you need to be ready for. The best way to deal with them is probably rolling behind them and getting a backstab, or parrying them if you have a parry shield. And here we get an excellent view of some of the locations we've been. If you look straight ahead, you can manage to get a view of Lothric Castle. And that building right underneath it is the entrance to the catacombs. I believe that building is where we fought the Undead Legion, along with the Farren Keep Forest. Moving right along, we're just going to pick up a few items here. And we could start making our way up these alleys. If you notice here, there's a locked gate. We will be coming back down here to unlock it. But for now, we have to head, on, head up the designated path. Up ahead, we're going to meet two different type of enemies. The first type of enemy are these ghostly creatures. And they have two different forms. This first form is their physical form. But they can also disappear. So you have to be paying close attention because they can definitely sneak up on you when they are invisible. In addition, they're accompanied by 
these fire witches. These fire witches have a crazy amount of range on their weapon. It can even be deceiving at times. So my suggestion is to take them out as quickly as possible because they provide continual support to the ghostly enemy. Be careful with them because if you get within the range of their staff, they can pick you up and toss you, similar to how the Clean Rot Knights can do that in Elden Ring. So go ahead and just keep an eye on them. If you notice, there is one in that balcony. And once we get close enough, he's going to start attacking us. So we are going to run past him and get to him as clean as possible. Because we're going to be pressured by a few more Pontiff Knights coming from farther ahead. And there are the Pontiff Knights right on cue. If you end up taking too long defeating the Fire Witch, both of the Pontiff Knights may come at you at the same time. Only one of them will come at a time, and it makes for a much easier fight. All of these enemies have a low chance of dropping their items which are really shiny and get extra cool points in my game. Now if you notice here, now there is two ghostly figures. The male one is most likely Bort, and the female one is the dancer. And the only reason I know that is because she's wearing her signature veil and headdress, which we will see later on when we fight her. Before heading to the bonfire, we are going to head in this direction where we are going to find an illusionary wall. Just be careful down below because there is another Pontiff Knight waiting to fight you. Oh. And he killed me. I think I got a little cocky there. Not to worry though, we can make our way back fairly easily and and make sure to fast forward along the way.
Okay, and now that we're back where we started, we can continue right from this point. And we are going to jump down this ledge here to open that shortcut into this tiny little garden here. This evangelist has a lot of health, so be careful with him. But he's not that much different from any of the other evangelists that we've fought so far. He also drops Dory's 9, which is a really good miracle, especially in PvP. And is pretty much a direct copy of Swarm of Flies from Elden Ring. So make sure to pick that up if you are a faith build. The attack inflicts both dark damage and a bleed buildup. So if you are trying to make a bleed build in this game, which is not as good as it is in Elden Ring, but it's still pretty viable if you're into that kind of stuff. This is an excellent miracle for you. As long as all these enemies are defeated, we are just going to go ahead and run up to where we first entered the illusionary wall. Because the bonfire is not too far away. Up ahead, you'll see a few enemies in the altar. We're not going to enter that altar yet because it leads to the dead end with a closed gate that we cannot open from this side. Instead, we are going to enter it from a different location. So we're going to take off to this area here into this chapel where we are going to find a familiar face. The bonfire is right over here. And to the right of it, you are going to see Henri of Astora, our betrothed. So let's go ahead and talk to her. Make sure to exhaust all dialogue oh, in order to receive the gesture that she gives. To face your duty alone. And from this small well conversation, our suspicions are confirmed. She is basically exactly like Roderica. In her past life, her and Horace were one of two children that managed to escape a devouring from Aldrich. And now that she has become an ashen one, she is seeking justice for those fallen children. Now, if you remember your conversation with Yuria, she did mention that one of her people was keeping a close watch on Henri for us. And you can find that person hiding in this corner right here. Oh, my. You are. We require more time. 
as long as it takes a dark droplet to fall, that is all. Ah, gracious lord. You don't want to kill this person because oh, we actually want to take God. Yuria's side of the story. And if you kill this person here, it ends Yuria's questline. I usually always choose to side with Yuria because by siding with Yuria, you can basically choose any of the three possible ending. But if you're adamant in saving Henri, you can kill this person here and Yuria will become hostile when you see her at Fireling Shrine. I'm going to go ahead and ember up really quick because we are going to be facing that invading NPC pretty soon. As soon as we leave this doorway, I want to go ahead and start showing you what those ghostly people look like when they are hiding their bodies. If you notice by that gravestone there, you'll notice two little eyes. And if you weren't paying attention when you grab that item near that cliff, this guy was going to push you right off of there. Just be careful and don't let him push you off. Be careful because from here on out, there's going to be many of these invisible enemies. In addition, once we get to that giant gravestone there, we have to hurry up and kill this demi-human because the invading NPC, Crichton, is going to invade us. As I said before, this guy could be really challenging because he gains a massive amount of poise when he does that weapon skill roar. If you have a weapon that could toss him like this sword does, it's probably best to chuck him off the ledge as I did right there. And it'll give you the easiest fight ever. Otherwise, you have to battle him out the hard way. Thankfully, if you lose, the checkpoint is not too far away and it's an easy walk over here. We're going to backtrack a little now and go into the alleyways to start making our way down to the perimeter of the city. This is the only way left to go because the gate up by that cathedral is locked. So we are going to head down in this direction now. Be careful with these dogs, they have more health than usual and as you can see they are trying to trap you by luring you in with that item. We're going to enter this darkened shack here where we are going to find a lot of these invisible enemies. And it could be a little deceptive here because some of these enemies can hide their glowing eyes for a little bit and you can lose track of them while they're invisible. In addition, some of them can fall from the roof and latch onto your head to do a grab attack.
just be careful with them they're not too hard but as you can see they can be pretty devious especially when they fall on your head like that guy did We're going to head up these stairs now to pick up an item. And there is more enemies here on the rafters, so be careful. There you go. A few more enemies in this direction. Now what we want to do is we want to fall down into the rafters over here where we will find a hidden chest with Yorshka's spear. After retrieving this, you can exit to this doorway on your right. But before we do that, I want to show you this location up above. There's nothing in this location, but I want to show it to you anyways because in New Game Plus, there are more items hidden behind this archway. And you should know where they where it is when you continue your playthrough. Usually there's another item somewhere around here in New Game Plus. And then eventually you could fall down over here. Now, usually the game wants you to continue to the, on the opposite direction. But we are going to fall in this direction because there is a ghost that's standing by that item there. And you want to take him out quickly because if you don't, he does this scream that triggers all of the other ghosts. And they all come running at you all at once. That could be a little jarring, so I suggest falling down in the location that I did in order to prevent that little headache. Now we could just go ahead and take out all these little ghosts without them being aggroed, and it makes for an easier day. And this wall is an illusionary wall. There is a crystal lizard behind it. Let's go ahead and take care of him. And a few more on these stairways. Be careful with them. And we're done. Now we can make our way into the moat. And if you notice, this is the location we were supposed to come down, but we avoided that trap altogether. 
now we can make our way down into the moat. And we are going to find a new type of enemy here. They are these really, they're like these drowned creatures with very long hair. Uh, not all of them are alive, however. Just be careful. If you notice that they have extra legs on them, that means that they're alive. You'll see this one has all its legs cut off and it's signifying that it's no longer alive. We're going to encounter a, a few more of those enemies in this swampy area, but they're not too difficult as long as you could tell them apart from the dead ones. That's a dead one there. And those and those up ahead are live ones. So just go ahead and take them out. Pretty easy. Another one here. And now we could pick up this item from what looks to be a grub man. This is a pretty cool looking location here. If you notice, there's an entrance into this tunnel here. And that is the location that will eventually lead us to the boss of this area. But we are not going to go there yet. Instead, we are going to grab this bonfire that's pretty close by. And we are going to make our way back into Firelink Shrine. We are now going to head back to Firelink Shrine and clean up a few loose ends that we have pending there. So let's head back there and talk to a few of the NPCs. The first NPC we're going to talk to is Ceres of the Sunless Realm. She is sitting right in front of us. Hmm. I have not thanked you for your generous rescue. That dark spirit was one of Rosaria's fingers. Vile, bastard offspring who lurk in the darkness. My sworn enemies. Fearsome invaders, to say the least. I would not have made it alone. You have my deepest gratitude. She is going to give us one of her weapons if and the silver cat ring, travels, which will eliminate all fall side. damage altogether. This does not yes, mean that you can survive any fall. It simply means that if you can survive a fall, if you will not take fall damage. Travels, In addition, I she now becomes side. our ally. This is important to us because there is no spirit ashes in this game. And if you have trouble with bosses, you want to have summonable allies waiting for you outside of their fog gate. After talking to Sirius, we're going to make our way over to Grey Rat. And Grey Rat is going to want to make a heist run at Irithyll. Oh, hello. Fine work, I say. Discovering Irithyll in the Boreal Valley all in a day's work. If the tales are true, it is home to old moon-worshipping nobles and should be packed with treasure. What do you think? Shall I go and see what I can find? Similar to when he left for the undead settlement, Rayrat will disappear after you reload the area. So if you need to buy anything from him, go ahead and do so before you send him away. Now, this is an important part of Grey Rat's storyline because after he leaves for Irithyll, Goodbye. Grey Rat will die. I will leave for some time. 
unless you take the following steps to save him. Do stay safe, you hear? All my efforts will have been for naught. <laughs> now, you cannot save him directly, so you actually have to interact with another NPC in order for his salvation to be assured. And that NPC is none other than our trusty friend, the Unbreakable Patches. This part of the quest will only be available to you if you have not purchased Seedwords of Katarina's armor from Patches yet. If you remember correctly, Patches had acquired that armor during our adventure in the Cathedral of the Deep. Once Grey Rat has departed from Fireling Shrine, Patches will have the following dialogue. Hey, what happened to Grey Rat anyhow? I haven't seen him at all lately. But if you know where he scurried off to, be sure and tell me. Now I need to stock up, and if he's gone and croaked, he'll have left a gold mine. <laughs> Initially, Patches will show his self-centered way. What? Gone all the way to Wirathil, has he? <laughs> there can't be much left of that frozen sprawl. Oh, the old rat. He's gone off the deep end this time. But this is why I really like Patches as a character in this game. You begin to see that underneath that selfish personality, Patches still holds a semblance of his humanity. He kind of cracks when he realizes Grey Rat is in danger. After this interaction, Patches will no longer sell you any items until Grey Rat returns to Firelink Shrine. And the only way to do that is to beat a boss encounter. Luckily, we left one such enemy alive back at the smoldering lake, which is where we are headed next. For those of you wondering why I had not entered this fog gate, it is for this very reason. If you continue forward in Erithal Valley to defeat that boss, you miss out on Seedbird's storyline. So it's best to save this enemy for this exact reason. The enemy here is going to be the Demon King, and he's really just a testament of how the demon race has really deteriorated at this time. When we enter to fight him, you'll see that he is no longer a majestic, strong looking demon. Instead, he is old and decrepit, still powerful, but no longer a majestic being like the demons in Dark Souls 1. And as an added bonus, you are able to summon Cuculus of the Great Swamp. We can find her summon sign right outside of the fog gate. Normally, I don't like to fight any bosses with the aid of any summons. But if Cuculus survives the fight with Old Demon King, the Spotted Whip and the Coric set, which is the armor she's wearing, appears in the undead settlement where we found our pyromancy teacher Corix trapped inside of his cell. It does make for an easier fight, so I am not going to add any additional commentary. Just take your time and defeat the boss at your leisure.
And that's about all there is to it. Easy fight with Cuculus aiding you at the other end. What we're going to do now is return to Firelink Shrine to get additional dialogues from Grey Rat and Patches. And we can now purchase, and we can now finally purchase Seedverd's armor and continue his quest line as well. Once we interact with Grey Rat, he is going to have a peculiar description of the of the events that unfolded at Erethel. Oh, then we're both safe and sound. Thank the gods for that. I don't like getting things so close. I might have died if it wasn't for that peculiar onion night. But in the end, it all paid off. Take a good look. They're sure to be of some use. And seeing how Patches is the only one who has the Can Onion Knight armor, ring, it's assumed that he was ultimately Grey Rat's savior. There's only a few things left to do now. We are going to purchase Seedverd's armor and return it to him. Oh, hello there. Welcome to Patches' Boutique of Wonders. <laughs> Can't resist it, can you? My sumptuous selection. After purchasing the armor from Patches, you can find Seedverd by spawning in to the Cleansing Chapel bonfire inside of the Cathedral of the Deep. He can be found stuck inside of a well near the entrance of the chapel. And that's all there is to it. No need to worry about I think that's all we're going to be able to do for today. So I'm going to say goodbye and hope to see you next time. Thanks again. Bye bye.